Hi, Mrs. Malchatter. I've got your notes on nucleic acids. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, so nucleic acids are one of our macromolecules that we'll learn about. I'm trying to move my little thingy here off to the side. There we go. So um, nucleic acids, their their makeup, their their biochemistry, all you know how we talked about carbohydrates and um, having carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we talked about glucose and stuff. But in nucleic acids, biochemistry, what it's made up of, is dependent on many different kinds of proteins, which we'll learn about in a little bit, and on um, the sequence of it. So nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. Those are the two types that we have. And what's important about these is that they are the sources of making the proteins. So they don't, when we inherit stuff from our parents, we don't inherit proteins, but we inherit the instructions to make those proteins. And that's basically what DNA is. It's a set of instructions. Okay, so nucleic acids are fairly unique because they can make precise copies of themselves. They are replicating. And DNA is a little bit bigger than RNA, but RNA's role is more complicated than DNA. DNA just sits in the nucleus in eukaryotic cells, and it is basically the instructions to be copied from. RNA, RNA is going to go into the nucleus. It's going to be assembled and um, carries the code that the DNA has. So it'll say DNA has the code and mRNA will go and carry that code or translate and carry that code to the ribosomes, which make the proteins. This is all stuff from biology that maybe should be sounding familiar. Okay. Specific sequences of these things called amino acids will make up a protein, and we'll get to proteins tomorrow. Okay, so DNA and RNA are polymers because they're bigger structures, and their subpieces are called nucleotides. Those are the monomers, the single structures. Okay, just like um, a monosaccharide was the monomer of a polysaccharide, of a many sugar. Okay. So let's get to what those look like. Okay, so there are a few different kinds of monomers that you'll find in DNA and RNA. The nucleotide is the main, the name of it, and that's composed of a sugar, which is a pentose, Anything that ends in O-S-E is usually a sugar. So it's a five-carbon sugar, okay, and a phosphate group, and then these things called nitrogen bases. And you'll remember them for biology as A, T, G, and C, okay? When we're talking about RNA, RNA has the sugar ribose, and DNA has the sugar deoxyribose. The nitrogen bases, those four of them, are divided into two categories, purines and pyrimidines. Purines are the large double ring bases, okay? And I have it highlighted in red, pure as gold. That's how I remember it. So purines are adenine and guanine, and they're pure as adenine, gold, guanine. It's an easy way to remember it. Um, and then the pyrimidines are the thymine and the cytosine, so the T and the C. Now, if we're talking RNA, you're like, but wait, Miss Maltrader, there's no thymine in RNA. There's not. So that would be replaced by uracil, which is still a pyrimidine, a single ring. Okay. So this is what a... Um, nucleotide looks like. We've got the phosphate group, that PO4. We've got our five carbon sugar, one, two, three, four, five. There's the fifth one up there. Okay. 
we've got our nitrogen base. And that this one is a double ring, so this one would be a purine. If it was a single ring, it would be a pyrimidine. Okay. So when nucleotides are connected together, they're connected through things called phosphodiester bonds. These are bonds um, between the phosphate and the sugar. So it's the phosphate of one nucleotide with the sugar of the other. So um, how that's done is the phosphate of the one nucleotide um, is joined to the hydroxyl group on the sugar of another nucleotide. And because we're joining two things together, we're gonna use that dehydration synthesis and that is pulling out a water. Remember, we take an H off of one and an HO off of the other. Okay. When we get a long chain of many nucleotides, that's when we could call it DNA or RNA or nucleic acid. And the polymers that we're talking about, this DNA and RNA, have polarity. They have a charge. Um, on one end, there's a phosphate, which is the five, what we call the five prime end. And that you can see because of the fifth sugar, I mean, not sugar, the fifth carbon. And then the OH from the sugar on the other end down here is called the three prime end. Okay. So we've got the five prime end and the three prime end. Sorry, I think I kind of circled over here. I meant over in here. Okay, so here's just uh, another little graphic to show you some nucleotides that are linked together. Here's that phosphate group, sometimes represented with just a P to make it easier. We've got our five carbon sugar, and then we've got a purine. Oops, there's another purine. There's a pyrimidine and another purine, okay? So here's what they look like. You don't have to memorize what they look like, but you should know that the purines are adenine and guanine and they're double rings and the pyrimidines are cytosine, thymine, and uracil and they're single ring. Okay, so deoxyribonucleic acid. It's, like I said, the storing and encoding of information that would tell your body what specific amino acid sequence to make. So C, that sequence of C, G, C, T, T, A, C, G, like cytosine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, thymine, that is going to code for a specific type of amino acid, which when you put all those together, we're going to get a protein, and that's DNA's job. DNA has two strands or chains that are wrapped around each other. That's why we call it a, a double helix. In eukaryotes, it has this more, I know this doesn't quite look linear, but um, it's not looped, in other words. It has this fashion, here's the one there, there's one there, okay. And this, in prokaryotes, the bacteria, it's a big loop, okay. So um, it's, we call, they say, we say that they have circular DNA. The base pairing rules, we've talked about those, but just as a reminder, in DNA, A goes with T, adenine with thymine, apples on the tree, and cytosine with guanine, cars in the garage. Okay. In RNA, adenine will go with uracil, and cytosine and guanine will still go together. Here's another uh, picture. This is of DNA, and we know because it's got the two pieces. And here is one nucleotide here. Here's the nucleotide here. In DNA, they're joined together, held together by these things called hydrogen bonds. Now, when we look at RNA, RNA is ribonucleic acid, and it's similar to DNA in that it's a nucleic acid, um, and it's made up of monomers called nucleotides, except it contains the sugar ribose instead of deoxyribose. It also contains the nucleot um, nucleotide uracil instead of thymine, and it is single-stranded. 
whereas DNA was double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. And RNA is, that is the workhorse. RNA is the one that takes all the information from the DNA, translates it, transcribes it into amino acids, which then become proteins. There are some other kinds of nucleotides, and we often don't refer to them that way and just say like the, the names, but we but they are actually nucleotides that um, don't come together to make up polymers. And the one is called ATP. You may have heard that as the energy currency of the cell. And that's adenosine triphosphate. So that's an adenine. You got the sugar. And then you've also got the three phosphate groups attached to it. So that's how it's a little bit different from just the other nucleotide with just one phosphate group. Then we also have NAD plus and FAD plus. They, these will come um, in play when we start talking about photosynthesis and respiration um, and NADH, which is just the recycled version. These are what we call electron carriers for our reactions like cellular respiration and photosynthesis. And we'll get back to those. And that concludes our notes for today. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow with protein.